Hey everybody, welcome back. It's been a long time since I've made a video or done an actual play of anything. Um, probably since like the summer. I've just been busy with work. I'm an educator, so I go back to school. And yeah, um, as you can see also, some of my setup, well, you probably can't see, but my setup's changed. Uh, my computer broke, and so I'm actually on my Surface Go, like basically a tablet that I've sort of done a lot of work to figure out how to make this video. Um, and part of that work is using actual dice and actual books and actual cards and a, as you can see, an actual uh, character sheet. Um, this is a custom character sheet I found on itch.io. Uh, it's really cool. I think it works really well. It's organized in a pretty nice way. Um, but something that it doesn't have, just like the actual character sheet, uh, the official character sheet, is no place to put your horse, which is silly. Maybe it does have one on the official character sheet. No, I can't recall. But anyways, I know... Uh, over the summer, I think near the end of the summer, I made a couple of videos about David Waywood uh, using the Foundry module for the One Ring 2E. Uh, but since my computer broke, I can't play that character, um, which is a shame. So I made a new character. I rolled them up uh, last night and got really excited about playing. So here I am again. My wife is at work. Um, so. I'm going to play uh, session one, which should be fun. And as you can see, my son, my character is Adir, son of Onar, uh, dwarf character, dwarf uh, of Durin's folk. And I'm a messenger, as you can see right here. And I'm a prosper. Da, da, da. Um, yeah, I have a lot of um, nice endurance and whatnot. Very, very poor uh, parry because I didn't take a shield, um, which I totally could have, but I liked the idea. I put axe times two, so I'm fudging the rules a little bit on this. I'm going to say that if I get a Tangwar when I'm attacking, I can use one Tangwar once per turn to make a second attack because I'm dual wielding axes, is my character, is the thought. And I know that's Maybe a little homebrew, but um, I can only do it once. Uh, so I'll be fishing for sixes so I can like do extra attacks um, each each round. Uh, or one extra attack each round. I think that's sort of like a cool idea for um, having two axes. Um, <clears throat> my cat is on my lap and he is hungry and he's gonna be meowing at me. Okay, say hi, Welly. <laughs> He's a bit upset at the moment. You, he'll get fed soon. All right. So um, I've not actually played uh, the Strider mode since I played like over the summer with David Waywood in the town of Bree. And so this is this is going to be called the Shadowed Path. Uh, this line of um, videos. And yeah, it should be similar, except for I'm a dwarf, not a human, and whatnot. Also, I'm just gonna be sticking with uh, the uh, rules here. The, um, excuse me, um, what are these? This strider mode rules. And then I have all the other rules um, in physical form. So I'll be referencing those. So it might be a little less interesting to see uh, I don't know. I don't know if any of this is interesting, frankly. I think um, I use this as a great sounding board for myself because I've found that if I don't have someone to talk to... Oh, here comes Wellington. Um, come on. Uh-huh. Uh, I, I lose interest. I can't just write it down and things. Um, so, yeah. So this is how this is how I'm gonna do things. Um, yeah. 
so let's see here. I the first thing I need to do is figure out. I know uh, this is blurry because it's loading. There it is. Um, I need to figure out my first scene. I have my character, but I haven't even considered where my character is, what I'm doing, or why. And I don't really know anything about uh, Adir, son of Onar, yet. But I do know I'm lordly, so, and I do know I'm proud. Those are two of my uh, distinctive features. So, with those things in mind, I think... The way to start out here is I'm going to you. All right, that was weird. Uh, for some reason, my my like screen capture program just completely failed and just died all of a sudden. So here we are again. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was about to roll some dice to see where my um, <clears throat> where Adair, son of Onar, begins their journey. Um, so it says you can use one or more, uh, feet die and success die. I'm going to do three and, uh, we'll go, this one is for, oh, okay. This one's for aspect and roll that a 10. Wow, there's a lot of tables in this. Yeah. Okay, 10, and so I need the first one. I, oh, I forgot a notebook. I'm gonna pause, I'll be right back. All right, I'm gonna roll this dice because now I have a notebook and a pen to do this. Okay, so uh, on table 10, we've got, here's table 10. Let's see here, a one for aspect, transform. Um, my question is, where is Adir now? Transform. Weird. Okay, that's that's in the action. So maybe he's crafting something at the moment. So the second thing. Okay, now uh, for the table aspect. Ooh, Tengwar. Wow. Okay. Um, is that up here? Yes, it is. So, Tangwar and four, kind. Um, so we had transform, form, kind. And last one, uh, four, uh, focus. What's the focus? Five. Oh, not Tangwar, Gandalf Rune is what I should have said. Um, okay, and f for f five, come on here. I won, but now it's all blurry, so we have to wait. This computer is bad. I need to get it, I need to get mine fixed or something. I have a part on order, but I don't know if it's gonna fix it or not, so we just have to wait and see, unfortunately. What is wrong with this PDF? This is crazy. That my computer is having a hard time loading a PDF. This PDF seems to be working just fine, although it's having a hard time loading too. What the heck? Oh, there we go. Uh, leader. Oh, geez. Is Mm, the power just flickered. There's a storm outside, so I might lose power, in which case this will be postponed. All right, transform kind leader. Oh, well, maybe not crafting after all. So, okay, yeah. So perhaps, um, the kind leader has been transformed in a way. Perhaps uh, that is a quest. <laughs> I see a quest. I know of a quest. I can already imagine the quest. Uh, I'm a dwarf, or Adir is a dwarf, uh, and the leader of the dwarves is 
Stain from the Lonely Mountains. Or from the Lonely Mountain. One mountain. Uh, so maybe Dane has been wise and intelligent and good. So perhaps, and perhaps kind as well. So maybe he, uh, there's something has been fall befallen him. Uh, a darkness has, has sort of entered his heart. And this is, I think, well before, oh, well, well before, <clears throat> or some years before, uh, the messenger is sent from Mordor to speak with the dwarves, right? Um, when Sauron finds out the, that a thief had, a thief being Bilbo, had the ring, uh, he sent an envoy to the dwarves of the Lonely Mountain to, to basically say, hey, we know you knew this person. If you can get us back our ring, we will give you um, the three rings back that have been lost to you. Because Sauron has, Sauron has the three remaining rings that the dwarves um, once had. Um, well, three of the seven. And so, <clears throat> and so, this is long before that, so maybe there's like something going on with the Dane where he has turned from like this kind ruler into someone who is, what's the word? Um, is, yeah, he's, he's been overcome by darkness um, <clears throat> in some way. And that actually works out quite well. Oh man. I need to ref oh, I need to refresh this. All right. So this is this is it. This is the deal. So I'm I'm using D&D Beyond for my my map situation. Here's Adar, son of Onar. Uh, I like that picture. I thought it was fun. Uh, long red hair, very very dwarf in my opinion. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. So um, something has befallen Dane, some strange sorrow and darkness. Um, and I think as a messenger, as a messenger, um, Adir has been sent to deliver this news um, to, to their kinsmen. I think all the way across Eriador to the Hall of the Dwarves. I think that's the, that's the thing. That's a super long journey, like insanely long, like super, super, super long. Um, <laughs> so, I mean, that's not bad, but it's very far. And so it's a, it's an insanely long journey to take, but I think that's the right one. Um, now, I'm curious, would I go through Adair probably would go through High Pass in order to get to uh, Rivendell, where he could stay for a time, because I don't think I don't think he would want to go over Mount Gundabad. That sounds horrible, um, or it doesn't sound like it sounds way more difficult, frankly. So, <clears throat> yeah, I think. Um, We'll start here, and I'm not gonna say, oh, he's already been on the road a long time, just because it'd be a lot of work in the sense that, yeah, I, I don't know what he's gone through, but that's why I have previous experience, right, of my character as, um, here he is, and whatnot. So, um, I wish I could put my picture right here, but I couldn't figure out how to do that. Whatever, it's fine. Um, wow, that's neat. All right, so I'm gonna pause. Okay, I've changed my mind. <laughs> um, I think the way this goes is that 
there is a leader in the uh, what is the the Blue Mountains? Yeah, the Blue Mountains. Um, Hall of the Dwarves. There's a leader there, or maybe it's Balin. Balin goes back and forth. So Balin is there, and he has been beset by some ill tidings or ill uh, uh, fell fell darkness on his heart or something like that. Yes, that's it. And um, tidings have come to Dane all the way to the mist to the lonely mountain and he's sent his second cousin twice or thrice removed adir son of onar to go and um basically find out what's wrong with balin but also um sort of have like a council with with balin and balin um the people at the Blue Mountains, or the dwarves at the Blue Mountains, and so that's where that's where we start. Um, yes, good. Okay, so we start with um, we start as we go into High Pass, which is a perilous area. Um, <clears throat> they don't go over High Pass when in the Lord of the Rings, so. It's not a huge description of it, but it is a perilous area. So I can imagine High Pass being this winding um, road. There's one lone traveler who walks along it, it's, um, broad in shoulder, uh, low in stature. Um, this person wears a cloak, an elven cloak even. Uh, I know people. And, or Adir knows people, I should say. And um, two uh, axes are at their hips, but also sort of um, covered by their cloak. And a spear is fitted through their cloak that pops out like a back that is like a little, um, like, hemmed uh, hole in the back of their cloak so that they can fit a spear on the back, a short spear specifically and um they are wrapped up as uh mm, okay um let's see here is it what what season is it we'll say we'll say it's like we'll say it's autumn and so it's it's quite cold in the lofty uh high pass um and it's this winding trail that goes along these ridges. Um, it's not super snowy, say, but it's certainly frigid. Um, yeah. So the first thing to do is I have to stop and make two uh, event re event rolls. Basically, encounter two different things. So the first thing to do is roll a d6 which is three, so it's a lookout awareness. Um, so and then I make an awareness roll to see if I succeed on this thing. Oh, okay. Yes, right. And so in a awareness, how much awareness does uh, Adair, Adair have? Awareness two that's not bad so i think i might be able to to do it so um he walks up this path oh wait but i maybe should like figure out what it actually is although then i suppose if if i roll first then maybe i would have a better idea of what happened Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. Consequences of the skill roll. Consequences of the skill roll. Okay, yeah. Okay, I, I'd forgotten the rules a little bit. So this is 
in the uh, in the dark land. And so I make an ill-favored roll to see what type of event it is. Here it is, ill-favored. A tangwar and an eight. Uh, so I don't get the tangwar, but I do get the eight. So uh, it's still a shortcut. <laughs> That's pretty darn good, gotta say. If the, okay, but I still need to succeed on my roll. So now I need to do an awareness roll. Uh, let's see, did I succeed? Awareness, 8, 12. Oh yeah, I did. I did succeed. I got uh, 16 overall. That's um, pretty good. No, 14, excuse me. But that definitely beats my uh, TN of 12. So um, I find a shortcut. So Adir is winding up these the, this, this way and uh, there's like, uh, I imagine a great like cliff wall on one side and then this small winding track of stone and then this l long uh, swooping bowl uh, on his left as he goes along and um, how does he find, oh, I have a horse too. So he's leading his, his horse along. Um, and at one point, uh, maybe the horse finds like a, Big, oh, he comes to uh, a fork in the road, and there is no way to tell which way the the way is. One, they both look likely, but the horse seems drawn to a specific direction, and he follows his horse. What's the horse's name? Hmm, I'm not sure. If someone would like to make uh, a comment on this video and tell me what the horse's name is, uh, I'll add it. I'll add the horse's name next time um, because I'm not sure what the horse's name is and I don't want to make it up right now. Uh-oh, my power is flickering again. We'll see, we'll see, we'll see. Um, okay, so I take decrease journey by one day, which is nice, but um, I still, I don't think that's gonna make much difference. And I take one fatigue. So I'll type in one right here. And I gotta do this all over again because uh, it's a perilous area times two. So we're not out of the mountains yet. Let's see how it goes this time. <laughs> I got I got uh, an Eye of Sauron and an eight. So I got, a, I got a Gandalf rune and an eight and then an Eye of Sauron and an eight. Obviously it's ill favored because I'm in a dark land. So the Eye of Sauron perceives me. Oh, and my shadow, I have I have one because I'm a dwarf, and then I just rolled an Eye of Sauron, so I have two. Um, I believe the hunt threshold is a 14 in the Darklands, anyway. Okay, terrible misfortune. If the roll fails, the target is wounded. <laughs> so we go on this, <clears throat> oh, um, Oh, I didn't, I didn't target, target it. So um, who is the target? Let's find out. What kind of roll do I need to make? Oh, okay, three again. So uh, also another awareness roll. So I need to beat 12. Eight. Oh, I got 13. So I just make it. So if the roll fails, the target is wounded. Ah, okay. Well. Hmm. So, oh yeah, there's like, we're going along this uh, other other track and, or like we split it, we go to the left and are following, we being a deer and his horse that has no name. And uh, there's this quaking and snow falls from like the heights and just like, like this huge ice, like ice, uh, not icicle, but like ice ball rolls past um, and almost crushes Adir. He dives out of the way. The horse gallops forward uh, and and waits for him. He dives out of the way. I take, unfortunately, three more fatigue. So this goes up to four now. Uh, but at least I didn't get wounded in the process. All right. He shakes himself off and is sort of like, oh. 
Sometimes it feels like the whole world is trying to get you. Okay. Uh, and then we're out of high pass. Uh, there's no more um, shenanigans that we have to go through to get out of high pass. Uh, the horse, whatever its name is, leads uh, Adir out. And we come to here. Yeah. Still, still in Darkland, unfortunately. Darklands are everywhere. And yes. That night, I think we, like, Adir and his horse sleep at the uh, bottom of. Uh, the bottom of like a a little dell with uh, a river coming out of the mountains or a, a stream anyway and it's quite it's quite cozy um, and the next day we head to Rivendell or not next day uh, it takes me it takes Adir two more days um, to come to Rivendell and eventually we are. I think there should be probably one more event uh, before that. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do another event. So first of all, who's as a target? One that's scout. So explore. Um, and we're still in the dark lands. So we're gonna go. <laughs> another eye of Sauron. Oh my goodness, um, Nito. So this, the shadow goes up to three, brutal. And we take three more <laughs> fatigue because it's, uh, yeah. And if the roll fails, the target is wounded. I've got to do uh, scout, scout. Do I have much into scout? Oh wait, uh, Scout does explore, an explore roll. Okay, same same roll. So I've got two into explore. All right. Oh, uh, terrible misfortune. So on, on the day before I come to Rivendell. Okay, this is where I think it's important to use the tables. So like, I need to know what happened. So I'm gonna use the ill fortune table because it seems appropriate. Um, it does say, let's see here. Come on, okay, action resolution. Rolling the, means uh, rolling a failure with the Icon means a failure was compli complicated by ill fortune, such as a broken weapon, difficult terrain, or enemy reinforcements. To help inspire a random result, roll on the ill fortune table. Okay, so here we go. Ill fortune. Oh, one. You draw unwanted attention. Oh. oh. All right. So I have to. I still have to make that explore roll. Um, so maybe ah yeah okay. So it's it's whatever terrible misfortune. I draw unwanted attention while making this explore roll. Oh shoot! I forgot. Um, one sec. Right, I forgot that I have this distinctive feature, Strider mode, because it's Strider mode, or Strider, because it's Strider mode. While journeying, the player hero is considered inspired on all skill rolls. Um, so that's nice. Inspired. Inspired. Oh, that just means if I spend a hope point, I get plus one dice. So I get two die rather than one die. That's quite good. Um, so I draw unwanted attention, which is, I think, really cool. And so maybe, ah, this is it. OK, uh, I come out of the mountains. I'm one day 
Adir is one day away from, oh my gosh, one day away. There's like whistling because it's so windy outside. It's a dark and stormy night. And that's what it is. Uh, a storm rolls in and Adir, um, he, it begins, he knows he needs to get a fire going or else he's going to, um, he's gonna be super cold all night, right? So he goes out exploring or searching, looking for, um, looking for wood. The horse is drawn up and he, you guessed it, he gains unwanted attention, but I do need to roll. So uh, I think, I think I'm gonna use a, a point of hope here. Um, current, so I'm gonna go down to 11 hope because I want those two extra die and I don't wanna fail this because I don't wanna be wounded. Um, so I get four dice instead of, uh, instead of two. So I need to beat, um, what is this? Uh, explore. All right, here we go. 10, oh, I destroyed it. It's ridiculous. I got 10, 15, uh, 22. <laughs> I rolled 20, 22. I just needed to get 14. So that's, that's, a, that's a lot of successes. But I didn't get any sixes. I haven't rolled a single six yet. So that's interesting. Um, all right. So he, he's gone out looking for wood. Uh, wood and oh he gets uh, he notes that there are wolves there's wolves and he can hear them uh, howling in the distance and it sounds like there's some that howl this in this direction in the woods and then like in the other direction and the rain begins to fall and he's like he can tell that there's like words like there's meaning in these howls they're there they are definitely trying to like talk and coordinate. And he's like, oh, I gotta get out of here. So he, so Adir runs back uh, to where he had made camp and gets his pony and they relocate to try to, to try to get out of the way. Uh, but all night he is awake, like listening for the sound of wolves. Um, and then we do it. We, uh, we come finally to Rivendell. All right, wow. I didn't think we were gonna like start out in Rivendell. That's not something that I, I was really counting on. Luckily, I have the Rivendell uh, thing. So, um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not really sure what we can do here. The Hidden Valley, um, the Entrance Hall, the Great Hall. The Hall of Fire, the East Porch. These are more like locations and and whatnot. And meeting Elrond. Um, I'm more curious about how they're going to feel. Ah, yes. Okay. Yeah. So when I show up. Because it is a hidden veil, right? Like there is like those people who, who think that like it's hidden and it's hard to find not only hard to find, but like impossible to find. Like it's not a place that you can just go to, right? Um, so I think um, Adir, he has an elven cloak and I think he got it from Rivendell, I'd say. I don't think he would be, um, oh no, he could have gotten it from the Wood Elves actually. I think, I think that's where he got it from. He got it from the Wood Elves. So this is his first time um, going to Rivendell. And he is in the Vale, but he he has a hard time finding it, I think. Um, and I think this will be like a roll of some sort because I think at some point he'd know or realize that he's being tracked. So I have no stealth. Oh, I have a cloak. I have an elven cloak for stealth. Okay, so I get two die. Um, and, or I get one die, one success die. 
and one feet die. And we'll see if I can beat 14 with that. It's not looking real hot. Um, but my Elven Cloak might help out. So I think I'm just trying to sneak around, like, um, but, and see if uh, the elves find me. No, I got an eight. So that's not gonna do it. I am not sneaky. I'm not a sneaky dwarf. Wasn't planning on being a sneaky dwarf. Um, so he winds his way down the, uh, into the veil with his horse and um, one sec. All right, and then I'm gonna ask the Oracle again, um, what, in what way do the elves greet, greet me? Because they certainly find me, or find Adir. In what way do the elves greet Adir? Okay. In what way did, okay, and so I'm gonna roll a, a uh, feet die to see which table we roll on uh, for act uh, no for aspect so five and another one for focus six so okay aspect and focus nope five and six okay so aspect will be three hidden. Oh, and uh, focus will be isolated. No, oh, message. Oh, interesting. Hidden message. So maybe this is more along the lines of how they try to communicate with me or communicate with Adir. Adir is perhaps going along and finds, oh yeah, um, he, he finds as he's going that there are stones like large stones along the path marked with a tangwar. I don't know, tangwar, that little symbol right there. It's like an elven rune uh, of some kind. And the paths fork out and spread this way and that until, and he, he keeps on finding these Tangmar stones um, as though they're leading him along. And eventually he comes to a dead end. There's only a waterfall coming down and the path ends. And he hears behind him the crack, like the snick of something. He turns around and let's say there are three elves behind him. The elves are wary. They go, it is long since we saw a solitary dwarf other than Balin, son of Funden, in our vale. Who are you? And what brings you to this place? And Adir is going to make a courtesy roll uh, to try and basically win them over. Like be super, I have advantage on courtesy. Cool. Or I'm favored on courtesy and I get two dice. So courtesy, here we go. Thank goodness I have advantage, or else I wouldn't have won. I wouldn't have got it. So I got 18. That's pretty darn good. Uh, no sixes still, but that's all right. Uh, and Adir says, "Oh, uh, pardon, pardon me for coming to your land." And he 
bows very deeply. Um, his uh, coat of mail sort of clinks and a little bit as he does so. And he says, I have been on the road for much time. And uh, it is actually about Balin that I have come, not to you in particular, and not to your veil, but to be traveling this way. And I thought perhaps that Gandalf, not Gandalf, <laughs> Elrond, the law master, might might uh, give me counsel for Balin is is ill. He sees fallen ill of a sort from what I have heard. And at this the elves sort of prick up and are, are interested and they go Balin is ill. The, he has come this way not so long ago. Years it was, but that is nothing to our folk. And if he is ill, where did he pick up this illness and why? I do not know. This is the exact reason I plan to attempt it, to go to, go to the Blue Mountains. That is where he is. And to follow up with, with our folk. We have had word from the Hall of the Dwarves in the Blue Mountains that Balin came back from some travels terribly ill. It is my job to find out why I have been sent from King Dane to check on Balin to make sure he is okay. Uh, the elves nod and they say, very well. You will stay here tonight and you will speak to Elrond for he is wise and stern. Perhaps your best hope to help dear Balin. And they uh, lead him to Rivendell, the actual, actual Rivendell, not just this dead end. Um, all right, so that's cool. All right, and then, so we get to Rivendell. Um, I don't know if I really have anything to ask of uh, Alron because I don't have any specifics about what's wrong with Balin, only that I need to go see him um, to see what's wrong with him, right? And so I don't think Alron could really have uh, much say in how to deal with this, but I can take a rest and feed my dog. I'll be back. All right, um, dog's eating, so she might hear her crunch in a little bit. Uh, so I'm gonna say, I'm just gonna sort of like time lapse through this a little bit. Um, because I took so much uh, fatigue for those those two eyes of Sauron, um, I believe I'm going to uh, stay here for a full week because I believe I can get rid of one fatigue for each day I stay. So if I stay seven days, I just get rid of all of it. Um, so I think that's that's good. Um, yeah. And then Shadow Scars, uh, I'll have to look at how to get rid of those. Um, my, if I remember correctly, I believe it's only during, during Yule, but let me check. All right, uh, figured out the shadow removal, but I, I don't get to take any away. So I live with that. Um, I guess I did forget to make my travel roll, but I haven't really gotten to my destination. That note was so close, it wasn't really worth it. Um, 
All right, so uh, I stay, or Adir stays in Rivendell for seven, seven days. Um, and rests up. He speaks with Elrond, and Elrond seems uh, concerned for Balin's welfare, and gives, oh, and gives Adir a bottle of Miravor. Um, so, let's see here. Come on. There we go. Um, bottle of, of Miravor. I don't know how to spell it. Miro or uh, for Balan. And maybe maybe that will help, but I doubt it. That would be too easy. Um, <clears throat> okay. Yeah. And after a week, uh, I believe uh, it's time for Adir to leave. He stocks up, uh, make sure he has all the gear he needs because his next location is far, far away. All the way to Bree. He's going to be following uh, the Great East Road to try and um, yeah, get to to Bree. So let's let's see how that goes because the first thing that happens is I have to go through the troll shahs. So um, fun. All right, um, journey journey event tables, marching test. The guide of the company must make a marching test. Roll the travel. Roll travel. Okay, that's the first thing to do. I'm gonna roll travel. How much travel do I have? Oh, three and. And it's favored, although I, it's favored regardless because I'm starting a journey and the strider mode thing is, that's just the way it works. So I have three, um, oh no, no, not favored, excuse me. It's in, uh, inspiration. Um, and favored, and so, if the rollout was a failure, the event occurs two hexes away along the journey path in summer and spring, and one hex away in winter and autumn. It is autumn, we decided. Um, if the roll was a success, the event takes place at a distance of three hexes plus one for each Tangwar. All right, so here is my travel roll. Ah, I get one Tangwar. I definitely succeeded by quite a lot. I got one Tangwar, so that means three, four. I get four uh, movement, or four hexes. Sorry that I don't have a hex map up. Um, I think it just looks better to have this. Um, so one, two, three, four. So that would put me around, around here, but, oh shoot, um, since, uh, I have to enter the troll shahs, which is a perilous area. Uh, I'm only going to make it to here before entering the troll shahs, uh, which is not great. Trolls hate dwarves. Dwarves aren't fans of trolls. So hopefully nothing too horrible happens here. I think I believe there is a table in the core book for the troll shahs, which is sort of fun. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Oh no, it's further back this way. Troll holes, troll shahs, here we go. All right, in the land beyond the last bridge between the Horwell River in the west and Loudwater River in the east, the east road is almost swallowed by a rough, rocky landscape broken only by thick patches of woodland. The horrid brutes that hide in the numerous caverns that dot the stony landscape are, are the source of the land's name, the Troll Shahs. The few hardy or foolish travelers that dare go so far from civilization and travel so near to the Misty Mountain should be wise to never stray from the road. Should some reckless wanderer step off the path, they will find 
broken towers and ancient castles dragged down to rubble. Wow. Hidden atop the low, stony highlands that cast long shadows over the east road, while the forests between these long, abandoned buildings are filled with dangerous predators and savage foes, many of whom have come down from cold, the cold fells or out of their dark holes in the misty mountains. Regardless of their origin, they have no love for the free people, seeing them as a little more than prey to be slaughtered. That's nice. <laughs> so, yeah. All right. Um, this is going to be an ill-favored role for the event. Fun. Um, I guess the first thing to do, though, is to check who, what type of skill I'm going to have to roll for it. So, event is... Oh, wrong thing. Oh, good thing, too. Um, there we go. Six, so the, I'm hunting. So it's gonna be a hunting roll to see if I succeed. And ill favor to see what type of event it is. Hmm, a three. Ill choice. If the roll fails, the target gain one shadow point. Hmm, that's not great. I get dread, I get, I get dread, all right. Um, ill choice, and this is for hunting. What is my hunting score? Oh, oh, it's really bad. Oh shoot. Okay. Um, it's just this. I just gotta. I just gotta get the te the uh, Gandalf rune. Oh man. I could use a hope. Hope point. Oh, I think I recovered hope. Um, one sec. I did not. I did not recover any hope. So I, uh, I think I'm going to use a hope point. So I'll go down to ten, and I get two two dice. So uh, okay, and let's see how it goes. I don't want to gain any more shadow if I can help it. Oh god. Uh, I only got an 11, so I was three short. That's unfortunate. All right, so ill choice. The roll fails, the target gain one shadow point. So I gain a shadow up to four. That's not good. Up to four shadow. And an ill choice. So I, oh, I leave the road, obviously. I just read something about like not leaving the road. So I take my pony and uh, yeah, I see, you know, a, let's let's see what I see. I'm just gonna make a roll on this, um, this uh, troll holes table. One, abandoned. Oh. Okay. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I go, so, wait, which, uh, it was a hunting roll. So, yeah, I have to leave the, um, the road to do, to do some hunting. And I find a troll that has been turned to stone. Um... It is holding up one hand. Oh, maybe it's actually like on the ground. Like it, oh yeah, it's on the ground and it's got like arrows in it. Ooh, that's cool, yeah. Um, but the arrows are orcish. They're dark. Oh no, yeah. Like the, like the, I see that, that it's got like arrows in the rock. So it turned to stone as it was injured, right? And so the arrows didn't turn to stone, like the shafts, but the, the 
but the troll did and it sealed the arrow shafts into the into the stone and of course it's been probably a oh mm, 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 mm. uh has let's make a roll on the this one if it loads correctly yeah um middling so we're gonna say it's middling w was this recent six or greater that's a four so no it wasn't recent um but the fact that it is confusing to adhere to see that orcs shot up this um this troll right like orcs don't shoot trolls they usually in some ways are friends with them um And I can make a scan roll to see if I find anything. What's my scan? I think it's pretty good. Oh yeah, it is good. And I get to have advantage because I'm on a journey. Uh, six. Wow, it's close though. 11. 13, oh, 14, 15. Oh, I just made it. So, okay. Uh, a successful scan reveals items worth one to two treasure among the troll's ill-gotten gains. All right. Uh, odd is one, even is two. It is even, so I get two treasure. Hey, that's cool. Uh, maybe I find like Oh, yeah, obviously. Okay, so, but I did fail the, the test, right? I failed the test, and so I have to gain a point of dread. And so what this tells me is that I found a cursed item. I found something that's cursed, obviously. Obviously, right? Cursed items are the best, so let's, let's look and make a cursed item. I think there's a way to do that here. Cursed items, 167. <laughs> oh my gosh. I am sort of like, a deer is, is he's greedy because he's a dwarf. 167, come on. Okay. Here we go. Cursed items. How to design a cursed item. Hmm. Yeah, okay, so. Owned. The item is owned or created by another creature, much as the ring was owned by Sauron. The item may have found its way into the hands of the player hero, so it might eventually return to its master. The lore master should decide upon a specific enemy to be the owner of the item. Possibly possibly choosing a re recurring villain in the campaign. When in the presence of its owner, the item becomes useless. Its special feature turn out to be completely ineffective. Oh, that's cool. Okay, I like this idea because it's like, the troll stole something and was shot full of arrows and then like, escaped but like was dying as it got like was crawling it was like losing blood and like could barely get back and it was like almost to its hole when it died but it has like holding out in its hand it has like a little trinket of, like a say an amulet <laughs> that's owned by something. I don't know yet. It's owned. It's owned. So I have an amulet uh, cursed and owned, but I'm not sure by whom. Um, that's, that's sort of exciting. I don't know what to think of that. Um, I'm a little concerned. <laughs> 
Um, but it also can lend me something. So, um, oh, maybe it doesn't. Maybe it's, maybe it's just a thing. No, no, it should be, it should give me something though. Because it's magical, right? It's not just like some random thing. Um, let's see here. Here we go. Here's like the magical, like crafting marvelous and marvelous artifacts and wondrous items. Um, where is amulet? Hmm. Blessings table. Okay, I'm going to I'm going to just create it by random because everything's random in this game. Okay, 3. So, it's going to do something with perception and 3 again. Insight. It gives Plus one to insight. Okay, so insight, I get, uh, so it's uh, insight gets plus two, which is pretty darn good. Amulet, but it's useless in the creatures. Um, Say plus two. There we go. All right. Um, yeah, that, that's fine. That's fine, right? Yeah, sure. Amulet cursed owned insight plus two. Um, my insights. Yeah, that's that's great actually. <laughs> it's just it's probably owned by something horrible and terrifying. So I don't know. Okay. Um, and when I put it on. Maybe I hear a whisper. Adir hears a whisper. It has been found. It has been found. And he looks over his shoulder, but it, his horse is just there like, <laughs> doesn't really care. All right. Wow, that's crazy. Some wild things have happened in this session so far. Okay, um, the troll shaws are up Mm, I have to do a whole nother one. Okay, so then again, uh, I gotta do, who does it target? It's gonna target four lookout. So awareness, an awareness roll for the next uh, event. Uh, I guess I get to move forward at least, get to move forward one to here, so that's nice. And, uh, Despair. If the roll fails, everyone in the company gains one shadow point. Oh, I gained the shadow. I also gain, had to gain um, two fatigue from that encounter. Just from sort of like hunting and stuff like that. Two fatigue. There we go. And everyone in the company can gain a dread. Okay. So it's basically the same thing. It's just despair. <laughs> um, at least awareness, I'm pretty decent at. I get to be, oh no, inspired, not favored. Um, so, okay. Wait, yeah, inspired. Um, so I need to succeed this or gain another shadow point and two more fatigue, not great. Um, here we go. Five, uh, I, I failed by one. Ah, okay. Um, Where's our, where's our 
do troll holes again. Here we go. Uh, yeah. Sources of dread. Natural but unexpected tragic event or very grievous occurrence. Um, serious mortal accident, death in the family, natural catastrophe. Those are examples. Um, whoa, Frankie, my dog. Um, discover village site. Oh, jeez. These are like some really gnarly ones. Like, discovering villagers savagely mutilated, experiencing slavery. That's like pretty. Experiencing torture, being haunted by a white. Crazy. Seeing the mustering of a shadow army. Seeing the eye in a palantir. Oh, yeah, that'd mess you up. Okay. Um, this is only one shadow and dread. So, I believe I have to take the two. So this is up to four now. And I gotta take the shadow. So the shadow is up to five. Dang. And then what happens? Uh, I'm gonna roll on the aspect because I'm not I'm, I'm not really sure what happens. What's the aspect of this dread? So the first thing is an eight. I think around here. Yep, eight. Uh, and what's the aspect? Oh, three. Silent. Oh yeah. Going along the road again, and it's a it's a wood, you know. It's there's woods, and there's cliffs, and there's wind, and birds, even in the autumn. And I come to a place that is completely silent. There's no wind. The wind dies completely. The air is still. A deer leads his horse forward, and he can hear everything that he's doing. There's not a peep of a bird. There's no blowing of wind. There's nothing. And he's like, just got this heavy, heavy feeling like he's being watched. And he just can't shake it. He can't shake this feeling of being watched. And that's how he takes a point of dread. Yeah, all right. But that means I made it out of the troll shells without encountering any trolls. So that's that's good, that's good. So I get to like here-ish. Uh, the last bridge, Appro approximately 100 miles east from Weathertop, a great stone bridge crosses, wait, is that right? Uh, maybe not quite, but more like, more like here um, is where I get, and that would be, one, two, three, four. That's the fourth hex, and therefore I have to roll yet another, uh, oh, yet another thing. But this time I am in a wild land, not a dark land, so I don't have to roll ill-favored, which is nice. Gandalf rune! Doo -doo -doo. All right, joyful sight. If the roll succeeds, everyone in the company regains one hope. Oh, that'd be... Damn nice. All right, um, I need to, who, what, what skill do I roll? I roll awareness again. Joyful sight. Uh-huh, cool. Let's see. Can I, can I, can I do it? Can I do it? Oh, what is my TN again for this? I think it's awareness. Yeah, 12. Bah! 6, 10, 11, 12. I made it. I just, just made it. All right. A joyful sight. So I gain one hope back. How, how awesome. That's actually really great. Um, nice. Okay. So again, and what is the aspect 
of the aspect of this uh, joyful sight. Let's find out. Six and two. Lofty. Maybe an eagle flying overhead, perchance? Something like that. Finally emerging from the Trollshaws and the sky clears for, for a moment and I get some sun uh, and there's an eagle overhead circling, one of the great eagles. And uh, in that moment, I think Adir sort of knows that he's He's like somewhat safe, right? He, he's okay. Um, yeah, like he's got someone looking out for him and looking over him, and it buoys his spirits. All right, um, nice. That's good. And then, yeah, we do um, another journey roll. Now, I might need to check a rule because I think. When you journey on a road, you get an extra dice or something like that. Virtues, virtues. Let's, let's look. I'll pause this real quick. I'll be right back. Well, I don't see anything about roads, so I'm not gonna worry about it. Um, I'm just going to play because it's more fun to play than to look for rules. So I need to make another travel roll. Uh, ch -ch -ch travel. I am favored and I get three die. Man, good traveler. I guess I'm a messenger. That's my job. I'm going to seek uh, a message rather than deliver one. But that's the whole point. And I'm going to roll travel. Oh, uh, joy, ah, I got a, a Gandalf rune, that's big, okay. And also a Tangwar, um, so that's good. So that means four hexes away, uh, again. So the map, let's see here. Um, four hexes, one, two, three, four. I've got four, and also, I think I get an, a good fortune or f whatever uh, on the good fortune table. Here we go. So, uh, one, two, three, four. Be there. Um, let's just move my. So this would this guy is moving. He's moving. So that's four days later. Yeah, that's pretty great. And. Fortune table, ill fortune table. All right, fortune table. Since I rolled a Gandalf rune, I get a, I get good for, to roll on the fortune table. Let's see what happens. I got a, is that a seven or a one? Oh no, that was a seven. I think I got that last time and I thought it was a one. Yeah, it's definitely a seven, okay. You, your success instills new hope or renewed resolve. Interesting. Okay, hang on. I need to read this again. Rolling means successful... Successful action was it bolstered by fortune, such as unexpected aid, adventurous terrain, or a foe's folly. To help... In Inspire a random result roll on the fortune table. What did it? It was seven? Your success instills new hope or renewed resolve. Hmm. Interesting. Well, I still have... Um, I still have a event to roll up. So... Here's, what's it for? It's for awareness again, the lookout. And uh, the event is despair once again, um, which means I take two, oh, 
up to six uh, on fatigue, and I need to roll awareness, which I believe is yep, yeah, uh, that and my oh right, what did it? It said what? Your success instills new hope or renewed resolve. Okay, I'm gonna say that this is like I'm making such good time. Um, things are going well. Uh, I've seen this joyful sight. All these things are going up in my favor. And I'm going to say I get plus one dice to the roll against this um, this dis dis despair because things are going so well. A deer is not in a dire straits. Uh, I think this is something that's going, going well for him. Okay, so let's see here. Uh... 12, I need better than 12. Oh, I have a cocked die. Oh shit, nine, 10, 11, I still failed. <laughs> More shadow for me. Okay, so that didn't go well. Another shadow, another point of shadow, man. Okay, Um. dang. Um, still, okay, so what is the aspect of this shadow? I think I need to ask myself. Uh, I'm not sure exactly, unless, I think it has meetings on the Great Road somewhere on, in this book. Let's find out. Ruins and broken stones. Fornost. Characters going to the North Downs, can go on that, okay. Let's see here. Ruins along the Greenway. I don't know. I thought there was a... Traveling in the Chetwood. Encounters on the East Road. Here we go. All right. So, I know that I gain a dread. So, I'm going to roll two. I'm going to roll uh, ill-favored on... The encounters along the East Road and see what happens. Out of two. Fallen King, walking past what seems a dense thicket of brambles, you spot the fallen statue of some ancient king of men. It is shaped like a grim and resolute warrior, now covered to, in dirt and worn by time. But at its feet, a wreath of flowers has wilted. It says has grown, but I'm going to say has wilted because it's autumn. Um, and anyone who examines it oh, can make a hunting roll. I identify the plant as king's foil. A sprig of it can be harvested, allowing a hero to gain 1d when making a healing roll. It is consumed in the process. But since this is... Oh... I think instead, instead of King's Foil there, maybe there's like, oh, some something has killed something there, like, like a, a, yeah, like, there's been like a ritual, like, maybe a deer has just been completely mutilated and strung up, uh, like, on the statue and Adir comes to this thing and is just like these are these are dark times he pats his horse dark times we should not linger and that's it that's that's the whole event that was actually pretty good though i like that one a lot i think that's really cool it definitely fills out the world i wonder i wonder like when like these are all like really terrible things um, going on around him that he's coming across, but he hasn't really like encountered any enemies quite yet. Um, maybe I need to start rolling like, it, do I encounter enemies or something? But that's okay. Um, we're just gonna keep going. So I need to make another travel roll. Yeah. Um, so travel is favored and I get lots of dice. This is a pretty, Okay, failed. I took I took the fatigue. I took the dread, and here we go. Travel. A 
six, 10. Yeah, plenty. I definitely succeeded, but this time I didn't get any Tanglars. So I'm just going uh, I think from here. No, wrong thing. Uh, here, here. Yeah, so here, one, two, three. So I'm, I'm getting closer to weather top, but I'm not quite there. Um, all right. And hence, roll yet another die for, or for an event. Let's see here. Two. So that's scout, explore. Uh, and the event is a four. Mishap. If the roll fails, add one day to, to the length of the journey and the target gains one additional fatigue. All right, so explore. I'm exploring for some reason. Oh, this is for scout, so I'm scouting ahead type of thing. Um, so what's my explore again? This is not one I've used that many times. Two, okay, that's, that's pretty good still. Um, here we go. Additional fatigue. Uh, right. Mishap. So I need 14 or better. 6, 10, 11. Nah, I didn't make it at all. So I gained 3 more fatigue. Yikes, I'm getting up there. That's not good. That's I'm up to 19 or 18. So I got uh, 10 more before I'm going to be in really bad shape. Um, okay. So, a mishap. Let's, um, I gain that fatigue and I reduce it by one day. So I basically just take one thing off. Um, fatigue, mishap. And I think I'll just roll another, I'll roll uh, ill favored again on the East Road encounters and s interpret it as in like a bad, a bad thing. Four, predators in the firelight. There's those enemies I was talking about. A small pack of wild wolves stalks around the players as they, camp, as they camp or walk upon the east road at night. If not driven off with an awe roll, they will attack. Fearsome, but ultimately cowardly, they will flee if they discover that the player heroes are no easy prey. Ah, yeah, okay. Gosh, darn it. I think sort of sniffing out, by sniffing out the, um, the, the strung up deer on the statue, they've, these, um, these, wolves have started following me there are oh just just two of them there's only two there's these two wolves following me um and when i make camp this day uh, i will try to make an awe roll to scare them away or else they're going to attack Seven, eight, nine, ten. I did not succeed. Um, I stoked the fire, but they attack. <laughs> and all right. Well, well, let's do some combat. Let's do the combat, huh? Uh, let's see here. What? Man, I wish they had a bestiary for this game. Um, I just think that would be go a long ways. Um, here's the undead. Trolls, orcs, evil people. Let's see. Um, where's the wolves? Man, the trolls are gnarly. I'm glad I didn't have to fight them. Here's the wolves, wolves of the wild. Um, I think it was Wild Wolf that I had to, had to do. 
Yeah, a, pa a small pack of wild wolves. I rolled a d12 to see how many there was gonna be. Um, all right, there's two of them, just two. So I need this, my notebook. Combat. Combat. Uh, conditions. I have fire, because I've built a fire. Um, they are cowardly. And um, I know they're coming. Okay, so I, this is what I'm gonna say. I'm gonna say, um, yeah, I'm gonna say I have a, Adir pulls an ax as he's around his fire. He pulls an ax in one hand and he picks up a burning stick in the other. That's almost like a torch. And he's going to rush forward and attack one of them. So there's two, there's two of them. But I'm gonna say since I'm wielding a torch as well, if I get a Tangwar, I can force them, I can make another roll to try to scare them away, even if I don't kill them. Um, so here's one, and here's two. Um, there's a, luckily there's only two, so it's not difficult. Um, let's see. Oh, I need to go through the battle sequence real quick. Oh, I think I have it over here. Versus of injury, wound severity, council structure, risk, success, when to roll, complications. Is there no combat thing on the... Oh, yeah. Oh. Hmm. Yeah, there's no, there's no um, combat resolution things on uh, on the the GM thing. I have a, uh, I have this out, <laughs> but I'm surprised uh, that there's not like a simple thing. Cause I think the first thing to do is start with. Um, here we go. Combat sequence. Opening volley. Opening volley at the start of the battle. The sides involved in the confrontation are st still separated by a distance. So I'm gonna throw my spear at them because that's that's what I do. Um, so I get two dice. I can throw my s short spear uh, at one, I'll say at one of them as I, yeah. So that's that's a thing. And what, okay, they're, they don't have parry. So I just need to succeed on my roll. Um, uh, oh, which is strength, yeah. Oh gosh, I rolled a one, a two, and a one. A one on my uh, on my feet die, and a two and a one on the thing. So I completely whiff, I throw my spear. A deer just, he's like around, he goes, be gone, foul beasts! And he throws his spear, but he's sort of off balance as he rises, and he just throws it into the woods. It <laughs> just like totally mists. And he's like, oh shit. And then he draws his axe and picks up, uh, he draws one of his axes and picks a piece of fire out of, a uh, piece of, a burning piece of wood out of the fire. Um, okay, close quarters, once fighting at close quarters and then the, the wolves are on him at that point. Uh, the gameplay is broken down into cycles. Surprise attack, no, there's no surprise here. Company is ambushed, ambushed enemies. Close quarters, stance. I need to decide my stance. Um, I'm just trying to scare these things away and I want more dice because I want the Tangwar to scare them away. So I'm going to go to open, or forward, excuse me. So I get an extra die with my, my ax and here we go. I get to make the first attack. Forward stance, engagement, more enemies than player. Okay, action resolution. Okay, so I'm gonna make my attack. I just need to 
they don't have parry, so I just need to get that uh, one thing. Uh, I just need to go get better than 12. Ah, success with the uh, Gandalf rune. Uh, no Tang Wars, though, unfortunately. But still a success with that Tang War rune, which means I don't think it would work for that. But um, I think that's just an automatic success. That's all it is. I don't think I get anything extra from that. But I do end up dealing five damage to one of them. Um, I slash into one. So minus five. They have 12 overall, so that's pretty decent. But it also means they both get to attack me. Oh, fear fire. The creature loses one hate at the start of each round. It is engaged in close combat with an adversary. Wielding a torch or other sort of burning item. Snake-like speed when targeted by an attack. Spend one hate to make the attack ill-favored. Oh, that would have been good. But okay, their hate goes down. Um, we'll go minus one hate. Minus one hate. Okay, I'm just marking down. So they each have two hate left. Uh, and they both get to make rolls, which is scary, because they aren't bad. So uh, they get three die each. So we'll roll the first one. And it's, uh, it's looking for um, 14 against me. Six, 10, definitely hits. Okay. Um, on a nine, no, on a 10 up. Okay, yeah, right. Wait, where's the nine? Oh, there's the nine, okay. So yeah, it's a six. Okay, so that's, uh, that's it snaps my hand and deals three damage to me, which isn't too bad, but I'm not loving it. All right, uh, just get rid of that. So it's down, I'm down to 25. Um, Okay, and the second one gets to attack as well. Two, oh, I don't think it hit. Two, six, nine, ten. Wow, it rolled horribly, really bad, awesome. All right, the second one I'm able to sort of uh, slash at to keep it at bay, and that means it's my turn again. So I just gotta keep swinging. Keep swinging. All right, but I still gotta beat that 12 um, amount. And boom, eight. Oh, oh my gosh, I got two sixes on the Tangwars, so I can deal multiple things. So the two sixes, I'm gonna spend one to try to make it this odd roll happen to scare them away. That's the first thing I'm gonna do. Seven. 11. Oh, yes, I do it. I do it. I am able to do it. So I got 7 plus 6 plus 3. Um, so that's plenty. That definitely beats 12 uh, for my TN to awe them away with the fire. And as they run away, I slash, um, slash at them as they go and deal another 5 damage to one. Ooh, ooh, I could use heavy blow um, to kill one, actually. Uh, I'll do, I mean, I like, I like wolves. I mean, but Adir does not like wolves. So he um, just goes in and with his ax, just takes the head off of one of them. Oh man, that's gnarly, that's, that's pretty insane. Uh, and the other one, Flees in fright from the awe roll, uh, and we are out of combat. All right, well, that was annoying. I take the, um, I take the blood, <laughs> or the, the carcass, and I hang it up. No, I put it off the road and bury it deep underground. Yeah, no wonder that was a 
mishap for sure. I took that. Um, that's fine. And I, and it, yeah, I spend the night or part of the night doing that, so it slows me down. So my next roll is gonna be a travel roll to keep on my journey. My poor horse is terrified from wolves. So let me see, where, where am I exactly on the map here? That's, yeah, that's, that's right. So if I'm there, but I miss one day. So one, two, um, let's see. Okay, make my roll. Ooh, a 10 plus a Tangwar. Yep, so um, unfortunately I don't get the three, or I get, don't get the four, but I do one, two, three, but I lose a day. So I'm like a little past weather top there. Um, I'm almost to Brie. That's gonna be the end of my session is once I get to Brie. Um, all right. Well, I guess we have Weathertop in this book here, number eight. Um, let's see here. What does it say? Weathertop, where are you? Weathertop, 90. You've done such a good job with this game. I think it's really fun. Um, let's see here. If you're still watching, great job. I'm shocked that you'd watch this whole thing. Uh, when, okay. Background, location. The east-west road runs... Oh, yeah. Runs close to the foot of the of weather top the hills steep the hill's steepest aspect is its northern face is a southern face excuse me so travelers on the road face a daunting prospect with the sentinel hill looming over them these days most travelers on the road are dwarves going from their kingdom to in the Ered Luin to the Lonely Mountain. I'm going the other way, but yeah, uh, far to the east. Few Brie folk wander this far, although the haunted hill is common, is a common feature in ghost stories told in the Prancing Pony on the on evenings. Well, that's fun. Um, so I guess it looms over me, but I don't, I'm not going to go adventuring. Um, I've got a place to go and I have a mission to do. So I'm just gonna roll my event. Uh, so which skill? It's a four, which is awareness again, funny. And then um, is this, I don't know, I don't think. It's sort of like I'm on the brink. I guess I'm on the, yeah, so I'm okay. So it's not gonna be all favor, it's just a normal one. A 10, chance meeting, if the roll succeeds, no fatigue is gained, and the lore master improvises an encounter favoring the company. Interesting, all right. So awareness. I feel like I should roll the, the, the roll before I know what kind of thing. Cause like right now I'd be like, oh, I wanna do maybe spend a hope point to get two extra dice to like achieve this chance meeting. I'm not gonna do that just cause I don't feel like it's in the spirit of the game to do so. Um, but next time I'm gonna roll this roll first and then determine what the, uh, the event is. Um, all right, it's a, uh, yeah, I need 12. I did not get 12, I got seven. <laughs> Um, if the roll succeeds, a chance meeting or master improvises. Okay, well, I gain one fatigue and I do not, I do not get a chance meeting. That's, that's sad, but it is what it is. That would have been sort of fun to meet Gandalf or something like that. Um, yeah. All right, um, but nothing bad, really bad happened. So, we're, you know, we're gonna call that a win. Um, that's okay. 
and okay so then a um, couple days later we're gonna keep going we've traveled all this way wow like quite a long ways today all the way from here to there um, almost along the whole map pretty crazy um, yeah okay um, so another travel roll for me see how we do I need sixes uh, I got one so eight I definitely succeeded so I get another four hexes so I'm here one two three that would put me in Brie look at that whoa okay the system I or the program I use for uh, the doing these videos just crashed again and now it's been like two hours <laughs> since I've been able to get it to work but uh, I'm just gonna end it here because um, we've made it to Brie I rolled uh, my travel check to try to see how much tra uh, fatigue I could get rid of minus two for my horse and then minus one for succeeding, plus one for each Tang War, and I didn't succeed, and I had no Tang War, so just minus two for my horse. So I'm still not, I don't, I'm pretty tired, but I made it to Brie. And I think we'll find out what happens to Adir, son of Onar, next time, when he's in Brie, and see where we go from there. Um, I was looking at what, like, awarding, um, awarding experience, and I was like, eh, uh, face a noteworthy encounter, no, complete a meaningful journey, no, complete a patron's mission, haven't done really any of these things, um, achieve a notable personal goal. So I think, I don't think there's any um, experience to do, frankly. I think that's pretty much it. So this is the end of our session. Thank you for watching the whole thing. That's amazing. Um, give me a thumbs up or comment. Tell me if this was interesting or fun um, to watch or listen to. And I'll see you next time. Bye.